guys, Matt here, Code Tech Notorious. And I want to show you just a simple thing about C++ programming. And, uh, well, let me just jump into the backstory. I've always wanted to be able to just launch my terminal and type in a function or type in something and just have it do exactly what I want. Yeah, that's simple. And in this example, uh, I'm going to say randomizer. Uh, I've always wanted to just be able to randomize things on the fly without having to launch an application and go through a bunch of steps of going through it tool just right here in the command line type it in type what you want roll 1d6 and it just does it and uh, i want to be able to run this from anywhere any terminal no matter what i'm doing no matter what I drive i go to it's not go to recycling bin <laughs> which is where some people think my videos should go so we go to my e-drive i'm in my e-drive but i can still just run this whenever i want all right so if you already know how to do this sweet but how do you do it with a C++ program and uh, any way you want. Well, I'm going to show you. We're going to walk through how to build this randomizer in C++ and uh, install it on your computer, basically, so that you can run it from your command line. This works essentially the same for Linux, except uh, the place. Yeah, well, I'll mention that when we get to it, but it's mostly the same. And uh, you can put other things in here, too. And if you can program it however you want, we can say, what about, uh, can we do this syntax? Roll 1d6. Sure, we'll allow that. And we we'll put other stuff in here too, like percent, like percentage chance, or dash P. Maybe we can put a help menu in case they don't type the right stuff. And uh, there it is. So yeah, just a little command line tool, a randomizer. Let's walk through how to build it. Alrighty, and here is the most important step. Don't. Don't build it. Just clone this and hit run and hit install. And then adjust your path so that this uh, randomizer EXE is somewhere in your path. How do you do that? Oh, you just go to, you just type in path here in Windows. And you want to edit your system environment variables. In Linux, this is different. It's like a dot bash RC file or something. You'll have to Google it. I don't know it off the top of my head, but it's essentially where you do this sort of thing. So we go here to uh, environment variables. This is system properties, advanced environment variables. And what we want to do here is edit the path. Now we have two places we can do this. We can do this right here. User variables for, it says the username who's logged in. So you can set them for each user, or you can set them for every user with system variables. There's path right here. So you can do either. If you want everybody that uses this computer to be able to do the thing, uh, do, do the path for the system variables. If you just want it for your account, you do it for user variables. Simple enough. We're going to edit the system ones in this case, and you'll see there's a bunch of paths already. Now, all these paths are places where stuff can run from your terminal basically so you'll see i have a bunch of development stuff in here and a lot of these are default now you can see just the c drive is here so i guess anything you put on your root c drive is in your path uh, but i also put a uh, randomizer right here at the bottom and this is just uh, the path to the source so it's basically installed in the same place it builds but i could you know you could move it to some other directory that already has it in the path because as you'll see when we build this randomizer uh, let's just do it, actually. Let's do it. So we've opened Visual Studio 2022. We're on the C++ development uh, cycle. We've also got the CMake tools installed because this is a CMake project. So randomizer. Here it is. We'll just open it up. I didn't do really anything super special uh, with the CMake. I pretty much used the default. We got a top level one. All it does is add subdirectory basically and the project. Uh, subdirectory has the one that uh, sets up the executable for a randomizer. And it's got to install targets just the executable so if we install this by switching uh this target thing to install and then release boom that's the path we added that's the one we'll use anytime we open up a terminal you can do this for any program however it gets a little more complicated when your program has resources it needs like uh, you know sound files whatnot or whatever you're using but this has none because it's just command line so super easy but now you do this sort of thing get the program built add it to your path now you can just on your windows computer do whatever you want and uh, have whatever program little function helper stuff going on in your terminal that you want they're very easy to build they're very quick to build just thought i'd show that i thought it was a cool little beginner thing you could uh, do on your computer that anyone could do technically without a ton of knowledge and uh, it's, it's super useful you can just build so much. I mean, this is only the tip of the iceberg. If you think about it, you could literally build like game launchers and uh, media players. You can process in whatever type of data you want through these input arguments, because this could be a path to a file, stuff like that. You get the point. But uh, this is kind of the bread and butter of C++ programming in general, because this is like where it all starts. It just, you know, just runs processes on your computer. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you got some out of it and uh, I'll see you in the next one.
right, so how do you build this? Let's walk through that real quick. Obviously, not gonna, I'm not going to type it up and rebuild it. I'm just going to give you the general steps. So uh, when you start a new project here, Visual Studio, you just do the, C, the CMake template default. And it's going to give you most of the stuff. You're going to have to add these source files over here. As you add them, it's going to it's going to do the thing, set them up for your executable. And you'll start with a main. You got to decide what you want to do. So we're taking in arguments and we're taking in specifically two. So I have a little uh, setup here. Well, first we start with a return result uh, that just just in case we need it, basically. But if we're not passing in at least three arguments, we just display the help and do nothing because it's wrong. This only takes two arguments the way it's made. Uh, your program may vary, of course, obviously. So the other case, the else, if there is exactly three arguments, we attempt to process said arguments to see if we got a correct command. And whatever this all large returns is actually going to be a 64-bit or a, yeah, 64-bit float or double. Uh, so we're going to turn that into an int for the sake of the return value for this main. However, this could be pretty complicated because we're basically doing a lot of percent chance type things potentially. So those are often better as a big old float rather than an int. So... Uh, I did make a types file, and the only thing it has in it is uh, F64 is typed to a double. But uh, yeah, we just basically go to process all args, and uh, that's just a function we have here in this namespace process, uh, all args, and it just takes in those args. So we only call this if there's a valid number, and basically this goes through and uh, checks what we're doing. Uh, well, it kind of processes your args by uh, doing a few helper things, like it removes white space from each arg, and then it also makes everything lowercase, so it basically does not care about caps. And I felt like this remove white space was helpful because there were some cases where, for some reason, characters would, no matter what, have a space after them. It's some white character type thing that window does, and that turns into white space. Uh, sometimes so that's why this remove white space is here but it's not really not going to hurt anything uh, the only valid commands on this program have no white space in the command so we always want it in general uh, but that's just for this one so a little, little processing on the args a little pre-processing to help us read them and you can see we've also temporarily instantiated a command list here this command list is basically the valid commands that this takes we've got that defined uh, somewhere maybe in the dot h yeah the dot h here it is just a new num class there's invalid roll dice percentage chance odds chance that's the only valid things we could simplify that you could only do one thing i don't know whatever you want to do but uh basically we're checking the first command see if it matches any of the said words and we turn it into the correct command and uh then we switch on the command because the command gets set and it processes the command now uh if it was invalid we just display the args and the help uh that you know that they gave us that's defined in these display classes we'll show them real quick uh they're pretty straightforward I'm not going to talk about them so you can pause if you need those speaking of i should probably zoom this in huh but uh yeah it just displays stuff basically that's all it does i just wanted to separate out the io stream class and otherwise it processes a command when it processes any of these three valid commands it does the same thing it gets the second variable uh argv2 that you passed in removes the white space and then changes those all to lowercase same same little string process you can do on the second argument this one was only on the first argument arg v1 there well i say first but really the very first one is the zero spot and we're skipping over that because it's just the program name uh anyway so we go to process follow-up now process follow-up is a helper function that is private to this process uh, so it's defined up here it basically takes in the command because we want to know what type of command we're processing and then the uh next arg and it attempts to do the thing so when it attempts to do the thing, it just switches on the command type, goes to the right one. Say it's on roll dice. It's on roll dice, it attempts this. If it's on percentage chance, it attempts this. And you can see what it does. Basically, this just uh, does some careful string processing because this next arg should be like a number, a D, and then another number. So basically, it looks for, it tries to get the first number, just first thing. And then it looks for the letter, a lowercase d. And, uh, and then if that's successful, it looks for the next number after that processes it. So it should get like a number d even 100. It's kind of complicated because of how you have to do this. It is digit and how you uh, get the pause. Basically, you're getting the position of the string. I don't want to get into that too much. There's a lot of uh, Stack Overflow posts on such a thing and uh, CBP reference if you're not real sure how these work. But basically, we have to process the string. And it's the same for all of these. They're just a little different because this one looks for a, a number, then a D, then 100, then another number. Percentage chance, or a, yeah, percentage chance doesn't look for that. It just looks for a number because you want to, you basically do a percent out of 
100. So you feed it a number between 0 and 100, and it tells you if you happen to be successful or not not your chance it's all it does very simple odds chance this is a, like if you want to feed it like one in one million or something this is for that so you can process anything you can say okay the dentist says uh, i have a six in ten chance what is that well it's obviously 60 percent. but maybe they give you a more complicated number or someone gives you a more complicated number like you have a 62 and 104 chance or something or 64 and some weird number this just processes that turns it into a percent and says whether you were successful or not not so just another little odd feature, but essentially they all do something similar with the uh, string processing and then doing the RAND. Now the RAND, this is uh, something I wrote a long time ago. We're only using N to R random, I think, or what am I saying? That's gonna make no sense to you guys. So these random functions are just functions built on chrono and random. Let's see, yeah, random and chrono. And all they do is they seed based on the current world clock. So it's different every run. So random seeds on time, basically. And it uses the Merson twister algorithm of that seed and uh, just feed you stuff. So these are the random functions. I think we're only using this one and this one. There's just a bunch of extra. I wrote these a long time ago and I've just always saved them. So anytime I need them, I copy paste them in, but they have weird names. Uh, the names are like, uh, this doesn't really matter for the program and you can name something else, but N to, this is like N to K random. That's what it's supposed to stand for. Like, uh, so it's just supposed to give you an idea of what to pass in another N to K random. This one's float. This one's int. You can't template all these as you would expect because of the way you have to instantiate different seed types. I think anyway, and the way I'm doing them static would probably mess that up too, but basically it's static so that it doesn't keep reseeding. Like once you get a seed, you keep using that same one and iterate through it through this Merson twister thing, or at least that's my understanding of it. And that's about it for the program. Let's see, there is a string util. I think I just put the remove white space function here because it's being used in several files. So I wanted to separate it out. Uh, the lowercase one could be put in here too, but it's only used in one file. That's why it's not separated out. But that's the whole program. Yeah, once we run this install, it puts it in that directory. Uh, that's just a sample run there. But yeah, this is where you get your debugger and all that, whatever you need.